Welcome to Inspiring Conversations. Yet once again, we bring to you a very successful and an interesting gentleman. Rajesh, over to you for his introduction. Good evening friends. Welcome to one more episode of Inspiring Conversations. Today we have got a very distinguished and a very successful personality amongst us who is none other than Dr. Manohar Gajanan Joshi. Friends, we all know Dr. Manohar Joshi as a public figure. You will be surprised to know that he is an MA and LLB and just very recently a couple of years back he has also done his PhD. Isn't that remarkable? Friends, Dr. Manohar Joshi has not only been a public figure but he's also been a very successful educationist as well as a businessman. He has held many positions of power and authority in the public domain. He has been a municipal councillor. He has been a member of legislative council three terms. He has been the mayor of Mumbai. He has been the member of the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly for two terms. He has been the leader of opposition in the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly. At the same time, this great gentleman has also been the chief minister of Maharashtra. Dr. Manohar Joshi has also been the union cabinet minister. But the best of all, he has been the Lok Sabha speaker of a gigantic country like India. Currently, he is also the member of parliament in the Rajya Sabha. He has written some interesting books like Speaker's Diary, Shiv Sena Kal Az Udya, Swachh Mumbai, Harit Mumbai. Dr. Manohar Joshi has also been closely associated with many educational and social organizations. He has conceived the idea of Clean Mumbai, Green Mumbai. Dr. Manohar Joshi also has special interest in theater, social service, and promotion of sports, especially cricket. He has been the former Mumbai Cricket Association president, and he has also been the former vice president of the Cricket Control Board of India. But friends, we are not here today to discuss the public life of Dr. Manohar Gajanan Joshi, but we are here to discuss the success that he has achieved as a businessman in the field of education, construction. hospitality healthcare and power generation dr manohar joshi has also been a very successful family person and has been blessed with a son and two daughters dr manohar joshi always committed all his sunday evenings to his family isn't this a point to learn from we have always seen dr manohar joshi as a public figure but behind this image is a very very successful entrepreneur as a part of inspiring conversations we have all gathered here today to understand what made him so dynamic in business what has made him so successful what has been his experiences and let us friends get together and learn from his experiences friends i am sure we have always seen dr manohar joshi in newspapers and television today we have an opportunity to interact with him and learn from his experiences friends like every session of inspiring conversations we expect some intelligent questions to dr manohar joshi and i'm sure he is going to love this interaction especially the questions from an elite audience like yourself i'm sure this is going to be a kohinoor evening let us all together welcome this great gentleman dr manohar gajanan joshi friends i always tell my friends that we should learn from others people who have read a lot of books we should interact with them and learn from whatever they have learned from a lot of books we say one time today we are going to learn from a gentleman who has not only read a lot of books he has written a lot of books and a lot of people have also written a lot of books on him so can we all welcome him once again <laughs> This gentleman has made Maharashtra proud. I don't think so there is any other citizen in this country other than Dr. Manohar Joshi who has had the privilege of holding so many public positions right from being a municipal councillor to the standing committee chairman, mayor, MLC, MLA, MP, minister, chief minister as well as the Lok Sabha speaker. So let's not discuss his public life but we are going to have a very interesting session on inspiring conversations all related to business let us begin first and foremost i would like to begin with asking that every businessman 
when he begins his enterprise, business enterprise, he always names it, baptizes it. So what is your story between, uh, behind naming your organization as Kohinoor? Friends, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, more thanks to you because you invited a man in politics for the first time for such function. He asked me, what was your intention behind giving this particular name Kohinoor? You all know what Kohinoor means. And you also know at the same time that when you call any business Kohinoor means it must be the greatest of all. And I remember maybe in 1956, because in 55 I passed my SSC examination. And in 1956, I was just walking on the street. I was working in Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai. And I had given him a job of municipality. You can understand how difficult it is to give up a job of municipal corporation. <laughs> so I was going on the street because I wanted to st start a business. The question was, what should be the name of a business? And there were two things existing before I came to the other area. One was the Kohinoor cinema. And I was just going from a footpath of Kohinoor cinema and therefore Kohinoor came to my mind. And the second was the biggest mig, which was known as Kohinoor mig. And therefore I start, gave the name because I saw these both the institutions in the other area. And uh, I thought giving a name is so important that if I name it as Kohinoor Meg, I will be as rich as the owner of Kohinoor. Which subsequently happened. <laughs> Don't call me rich. Because if you call me rich, people will say he is not a politician. <laughs> <laughs> or otherwise, or otherwise also, they may say he must be in politics. <laughs> if, you call, if you call me rich. But I did both the business, not, not the theatre business, nor the MIG business. The theatre still exists. But the Kohinoor MIG which was there, I purchased it. Wow. wow. I purchased it because the MIG was closed that time. <laughs> but you know, doing a business, and politics at the same time is really very interesting. One thing nobody calls you if you are in a business, nobody will say that he must be a corrupt man. And therefore I always say that if you want to come to politics, start your own business and then join politics. <laughs> Otherwise even if you earn 5 rupees, people will say it is easy to earn money in politics. But I started, I did business, and even I am doing today business, but I have told my son to look after the business. And I will only go to such friends who ask me questions on business or questions on politics. As I have agreed with you that I will speak on business, you can ask me the next question. Thank you. <laughs> friends. You have seen by the first answer itself that he also has the gift of the gab, which is very important in business and very much more important in politics also. So, my next question to you, sir, is, well, before that, I would just like to inform them about uh, Kohinoor Mills. The next book that Dr. Joshi is <laughs> writing about is a book in Marathi called Charshe Equis Koticha Kohinoor. 
Take them in English. <laughs> 421 crores worth of Kohinoor in Kohinoor mills. Uh, you will be surprised to know he is into five businesses like it was announced. He was he's in the business of education, hospitality, uh, uh, wellness, healthcare and wellness, power and what am I missing? Real estate and construction. He is starting the first seven star hotel of Mumbai at the same Kohinoor mill. So probably, I'm sure it must have been not his vision at that time, but it built as a vision. Another inspiring uh, attribute that I would like to discuss is how a person from a very small unknown village of Maharashtra comes up to Mumbai and grows up to the scale of being a very successful businessman as well as a, as well as a politician. Most of us in this room are people who have begun from the scratch. But I'll tell you what he has undergone is something beyond the scratch. There is a concept which is known as Varavar Jevne. Varavar Jevne means you identify seven houses in a week and you go to every house one day and they will feed you food. So his condition was such when he was 16 and 17 years of age. And seven houses, seven different houses every day and he used to go and have his food. Now the story doesn't end here. The story says that there were days when suppose on a Monday, if he's going to Rohit's house for food, for lunch or for dinner, and if Rohit is out, he goes hungry. Suppose on a Tuesday, he goes to Mr. Kailash Biani's house and Mr. Kailash Biani also coincidentally is out. He goes hungry the second day, two consecutive days together. And what does he eat during these days? He eats groundnuts. The objective of saying this is how inspiring such stories can be where when we say that we are really deprived that we can't do bigger business. Nobody can be further deprived than this. And coming from such background, he has created ripples nationally and internationally also. Sir, I would like to ask you, the success for any businessman is to hire very intelligent people, probably people smarter than the businessman, but under his control. What would you like to say on this? What would you like to say about hiring people? Do you mind if I speak about my poverty first? <laughs> we will uh, find it difficult to believe, but you can <laughs> say, sir. The poverty was there because I was from a very small village in the uh, Raigad district. It was a very small village of, uh, of a population of about 100, 150 that time. Now the population is grown up. But apart from everything, that poverty brought me to be business. I have been always saying that if somebody wants to be successful in his life, what should he do? I am going beyond your question. Being in politics, I have that habit. <laughs> Sir, we are also habituated. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, I have come to a conclusion that man must have three things to become successful and make his life successful. Firstly, he must have education. Education means enough education. I remember when I was first time serving in municipal corporation, I had only completed my SSC examination. But that's not enough now. Now, if you want to say that I am educated, you must be at least graduate. And therefore, I completed my education. I passed BA, then MA, then LLB, and then lastly PhD. So now, I am educated. You can believe that I am educated. But that's not enough. You must have also enough money. Well, how to define money? How to define it? If you are earning crore of rupees every month, then you are rich. And that is enough. I don't expect much from everybody. But at least one crore rupees every month is not a big amount. We are happy with so, your statement, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but it, my conditions are only those who were poor as I was. <laughs> so that is the second thing required. And thirdly, what you require is a happy family. If you get everything but in your family, if there is no happiness, then your money, your education, everything is wasted. And therefore, my next speech in your organization, how to make family happy, it is also a difficult task. But if these three things are achieved, means you, have, you are successful in your life. And therefore, everybody must plan right from the beginning as to what he wants to be, how he, he can achieve his, his goal. And thereafter, if somebody tries sincerely, it is possible for everybody. And uh, the country reaches, con the country becomes rich if the people in the country are rich. It is not good to hate somebody because he has earned money. I meet poorest of the poor people and also richest people. I come across them because I am in politics. And everybody has some or the other work with a politician. So my, my desire is that everybody, everybody must do a planning right from his young age. And therefore, when I wrote my book, my autobiography, I gave a name to the autobiography. It is, of course, in Marathi. The name is 255075, is the name of the book. Now, this book is my autobiography, and therefore, yeah, it gives me three stages of my life. First, up to 25 years, then up to 50 years, and lastly, up to 75 years. Now this book, the name I have given is itself a name which brings a success to you. For instance, up to 25 years, what should you do? You should go to the college and complete at least your graduation. If you become graduate, you can get a job, but you don't get a money. But if you want to get money, then you must be in the business. I have said it and number of times written in my different books that between 25 and 50, the age, man must work hard and try to earn maximum. And with this type of education and with the money that he has earned, remaining, remaining years of his life, right from 50 to 75, he can just sit at home, ask his children to work, they must work hard and he must enjoy the money that he has earned. These are the three things. My book is on this subject and the book gives everything how to do all these things. I, I don't think anything is impossible for anybody. And therefore when I said that one must earn one crore rupees per month, Nobody was surprised here. It means I'm sure that everybody is earning minimum one crore of rupees. I also wanted to judge as to what type of people I'm talking about. So I'm very happy that you brought me to a very good program. I would like everybody to be my friend. Because I like those people who have crores and crores of rupees. This, Sir, during... This business is not when I speak about politics. This is only because you are all in the industry doing some work which is useful to earn money. Sir, yes. during your uh, growing days in business, you were also busy with your public life. So to do business, you must have had multiple partnerships. There are a lot of us sitting in over here who have joint ventures, partnerships. So can you throw some light on how to make a partnership successful, that is one. And if it is not successful, then how to dissolve it successfully? <laughs> <laughs> because you have done both. Yes, yes, yes. I'm one is a to... very famous story <laughs> about one of his partnership. And it was a fantastic formula that he applied. <laughs> and I would like to request him to share that formula with all of us. 
Uh, you can share it, but don't dissolve partnership and say that we dissolved the partnership because Manohar Joshi told us to do this. <laughs> you see, uh, how to form a partnership is your one other question. Yes, yes. How and why? Uh, how and why? You see, why I will repair first and then I say how I did it. You see, partnership forming, I did it only because somebody said that we have no money, how can you do with business? You ask anybody to business, do business, he will say that business requires money and we have no money. So whenever we want money, you must go to a rich person and form a partnership. And catching a rich man is not a difficult task because normally rich people are also in the search of good people. And you know, as you said, it is true that the business grows provided you have good people with you. And good people also, they are good because they keep on doing something else than business. And we want also a partner who is not in the business, but he is doing something so that he, when you approach him, he will immediately welcome you. Because he is also in a search, search of a job which will, which will get a lot of money for him. And therefore, these both persons, come, persons or group of persons coming together and doing business gives them success. I told my friends that there is never a shortage of money. Those who say that we don't do business because we have no money are themselves lazy people. One who is prepared to move from place to place, bank to bank, can get money easily. In fact, these days, money is lying with the banks. Because banks are there. They want people to take the money from them and return it also on time. And therefore, therefore, finding good people for taking money as a loan for a business and returning it on time is a shortage of such people. If you can find out such people, no problem. Money is never a problem for business. Please remember. You can get money as much as you want, provided the bank believes that you are a faithful man. You will return the money. Banks are not interested in anything else. And therefore, the first thing, business requires money, you got of money as per your business, size of your business. But people unnecessarily say that we have no money and therefore we don't go for business. But banks, and another thing, another thing which can pay you is your partner. Finding out good partner, making a partnership and find out a partner with money is also a work. So such a businessman requires money, such a businessman requires a partner who wants somebody to invest money in the business is also absolute necessity. Friends, this thing is not difficult provided you have a strong desire to do it. And uh, I quote you a sentence from a, my political guru. My political guru for the last 45 years was Mr. Bagasab Thakri. You must have heard his name, the chief, chief of civil. <laughs> if you have not heard, you can't stay in Mumbai. <laughs> but the Bagasab Thakri was all, to, all the years of his life, he was with me. We used to go together for a meeting so so. So one day in 1994, I was going with Mr. Thakri. And his speech was just over. We were sitting in a car and coming to a hotel or somebody's house. And uh, I asked Mala Sahib, I was the only person who had a courage to ask him. So I asked him, Bhagat Sahib, you in a speech said that in next year, that is in 1995, Shiv Sena will be in power and we will rule Maharashtra. I said, Bhagasab, how did you say this? Is it possible? 
when we had uh, we had only 54 seats in the assembly because for for going to power it requires more than 100 seats so i said bagasab how did you say this uh, i said the uh, uh, Bhagasab said, because this was my question. So Bhagasab said, uh, Manohar Pant, he used to call me Pant. Pant is an honor. If you want to call me, call me always Manohar Pant. Don't call me Manohar Joshi or Dr. Joshi. <laughs> <laughs> so he called me like this and said, he said, I tell you one thing, please remember. If you have a determination and also self-confidence, you can get whatever you want. So I just laughed. I said, is it enough? Said, yes. Now in your business, you plan big things and you will succeed. There also I you did partnership. In the business? You're getting the government also. Yes, sir, we did partnership. So without it is also equally useful without, in business. Without partnership, partnership means quarrels, courts, this, everything. We did everything. <laughs> and for me, it was easy because I was in business in partnership. Politics also requires the same thing. So we, we did that. And I was just pointing out to you that Bhagasab's one sentence gave me courage. That determination and self-confidence. I am fully convinced now, after Bhagasab's meeting, that if somebody wants to succeed, what he wants to do is the courage to do, desire to do, strong will to do it, and also a determination. Friends, one sentence affected my entire life. I entered politics. And as you rightly said, Bhagasab gave me every post in politics. I became the mayor of Mumbai. Before that, I was also the standing committee chairman. That was in the municipal corporation. Then I went to assembly and got elected two times from same constituency, Dadar. And in Dadar, I got elected and also I got elected to the Legislative Council. It's another body. And uh, after becoming the MLC, they call it MLC, Member of Legislative Council. Three times I got elected. So total five times, means 25 years, I was in the Maharashtra Assembly or Legislative Council of Maharashtra. Then I thought of going to center. I went to center during the time of uh, my membership of assembly, I became the chief minister. I was not minister before, nor I became minister in Maharashtra any time, but I went to central and in central government, after getting elected to Lok Sabha, I immediately became the minister and minister also of heavy industries. This Kohinur Mega was also with heavy industries. But, in, but you will immediately conclude that he must have got this because he was the minister of the same department. <laughs> but it is not so. There was sir, we believe you. Regular, regular action. We believe you, sir. No, not believe. You are gentlemen. <laughs> of course, I am also gentleman. Huh? <laughs> so, so I got the property of the government in an auction for by giving the highest price and that highest price was, as you rightly mentioned, 421 crores. And I constructed a building, building is ready now. I will give, give the reply to you why the project is delayed if you ask me a question. So the project is now ready. The rate is also not much anybody can afford from your, from the crowd. <laughs> and if he says that he is from the crowd, I will reduce the price by 100 rupees <laughs> per square foot. It's not for 
<laughs> but, but you know, the beginning also has completed. My point was, having things become possible, provided you have a strong desire to do. If you are prepared to work in a direction, you don't hate moneyed people, but you would like to earn money. And if you do that, always remember whatever business you do, always say that behind you, behind your work, there is a, con there is a map of our country. And that brings up the country. During my time of all the big post in politics, I had an opportunity to visit different countries. About 45 or 46 countries I visited because that was at the cost of the government. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, who goes from here to America? But I did go. And my, I wanted to tell you what I found in China. The country, once upon a time, which was poorer than us, has become rich, more rich than what we are. It's only because the people know what to do. The people know how to do business. And therefore your work, particularly the work that you have started of getting different people together who are in the industry and, and speaking to them by from different, uh, different types of people is really important. This small group, we never ask their children to work under anybody. Instead of working under anybody, create different posts where the number of people come and work. That is the advantage of a business and therefore it is necessary to be in the business and succeed in the business, I am sure that you will be able to do. And therefore, according to your question, I have tried to reply, becoming a rich is not a crime. China did it and China is one of the richest country in the world today. The poor country also became rich only because of the philosophy of the government and philosophy of the people also. Sir, about diversification, like you are into five industries, you are into education, construction, power, hospitality and wellness, hospita uh, hospitals. What is the correlation? Diversi diversification is very good. There are some people who say that you should focus only on one line of business and become the master of it. There are some people who say that you should do multiple businesses and still grow big, like Richard Branson. There are some people like Dr. Manohar Joshi who are into five businesses and grown big. So how do you diversify? What do you think when diversifying? What is the correlation between education, construction, hospitality, hospitals and power generation? What is the correlation? As a matter of fact, the only correlation is its business. But otherwise, no one man can do such business if he wants to become really master in some business. He should be master in earning more and more money. In my business, I have always thought the best business is one which pays you maximum. What is your business? <laughs> Sir, I am into education, construction, hospitality. Hospital and power generation is pending. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I never teach uh, freely anything. <laughs> I charge and take money. So whenever you earn, I will remember that you started a new business because Manohar Dushi came and told this in a meeting like this. I'll, I'll agree, sir. <laughs> sir, I think one of the correlation in all the five businesses is a very good asset base. Is that? Asset base. Yes. Uh, asset, biz, biz, asset base business, almost my all business, Are asset we have based. created assets. Yes. Because you know, even the business does not run, the price of an asset goes on increasing and you become rich within no time. Because you know in a business, I have three categories before me, always. And I have been always saying that do three businesses, don't do only one business. Because then the one business that you do goes to loss, means your family has nothing to eat. And if your family you want to keep happy, means do three types of businesses. 
I give you instances. There is some businesses which are of speculation and they are the real business. For instance, this business of construction is a speculation. And it, is, it becomes speculation because the rates in the market of any state goes down sometimes and sometimes they go up. My question is, what do you want to do? If that business starts going in, into loss, and therefore, one business, you must play like that, but not in all the businesses that you see. One business, for instance, construction, if you are doing a business of a speculation, then also do a business of hotels, which is a steady business, which you are doing and I am also doing. <laughs> uh, but, but we don't call people in our hotel. People are to be always called in somebody else's hotel. <laughs> Sir, before booking this hotel, I tried Kohinoor and it was full. <laughs> I wanted to use your name, but I didn't want to depress somebody who had already booked it. No, somebody told me that today your friend came and paid money. That was also for the first time happening in my hotel. <laughs> That Otherwise, was, generally your friends was, don't pay. <laughs> friend never pays. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a steady business and therefore I said. And the third business is that in every business, you must go on increasing your money. And therefore, the increased money should be always kept in a bank. So at least your food is secured. All these do two businesses, acquisition business and steady business. If they go to loss, then also every day, every day food will be prepared at home because the money safely comes to your wife. She prepares the food and whenever you go home, she does not know what is happening in business. And the business depends. If you, do, if you are doing three business, first is the construction, Second is the technical institute, that also is a steady business. You'll be surprised to know when I started my institute, I had four students and one teacher, that is me. I used to teach, I used, I used to tell all those boys, don't worry, I will teach you all subjects. And there were all subjects were taught by me, excepting mathematics. Why not mathematics? Because person who knows Mathematics nicely, he goes on calculating what is the income, how is the increment, and therefore it is better to be away from mathematics. But uh, uh, all other subjects I used to teach. And after teaching all subjects, I am telling you a story of 1956. After teaching all these subjects, I used to go home. And after going home, I had no courage to speak to my wife also. I used to get tired. But from that, I, go, I went on increasing my business. In the initially, that was academic education. Then we started a technical institute in partnership. That time also we had about four or five students initially. But thereafter, the number, number grew. And you'll be surprised, today, my institutes are in every state of the country. And when I became the speaker in Yog Sabha, Mr. Bajpi was addressing the house. And he said, do you know what our new speaker is? He has an educational institute. Not only in Mumbai, but everywhere. And if the government wants to stand, start a stand, they go, and see the Kohinoor Technical Institute, and opposite to that, the government starts its own ST stand. <laughs> that was Mr. Bajpayee, and he was capable of cutting such jokes. Uh, and that he was, was true to a great extent also, sir. Because every ST stand has a Kohinoor Technical Institute. It, was, it used to be every, opposite every stand, there was Kohinoor Technical Institute, but now I start my other business also. Kohinoor Technical Institute is a part of it. But I start also a hotel now. As you rightly described, I have three-star hotel, four-star hotel, five-star hotel, and now seven-star hotel coming up. Therefore, your next meeting 
is in Kohinoor Seven Star Hotel in Mumbai. Remember. Eh? <laughs> Sir, you are on record and what you said is recorded. Ah, man. But Seven Star Hotel always demands double fees. <laughs> that is also to be recorded. Eh? <laughs> so this, this also I used to do. Institute, hotel, this. And it's only my liking. Not that I want to do so many business. But doing a business is also a thrill. You must start enjoying business. And how to start enjoying business? Not by going to your own hotel. But every business you can see and enjoy. Now this windmills, power generation, windmills we have started. We did first four windmills wind in Satara, in Maharashtra. And then I knew that Maharashtra does not pay as much as we expect. Therefore, we shifted from here to Indore, Madhya Pradesh. And in Madhya Pradesh, within a short time, we started 30 windmills. Now, do you know, I have not gone to my business yet. But you know, for a business, you, you personally need not be present. Otherwise, it becomes a business of a small nature. If you want to be a big businessman, now do you think that I can take any name? Do, do you know that they have not visited their big mills also? It is not necessary that you should go to your business every day and why do you keep water here? Water should be kept there. Why do you buy, buy this table? You should buy a better table. What, what have you got to do with it? Get the money and go home. <laughs> Enjoy it. Then you can be a big businessman. Becoming a big businessman and remaining a small businessman throughout life is also an independent subject. And therefore, so choice of a business is always important. What business you want to do? If you run your rickshaw, own rickshaw, but then also you cannot become a big businessman by running 50, 100 rickshaws. Not possible. So this is the charm of a business and therefore business should be done if possible throughout life and if possible with business you should do politics also instead of doing a politics with wife. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, my next question is, there is a very interesting formula that you applied in your business uh, in the field of education business when you split with your partner. So how was that formula of exit? It is a very interesting formula, friends. You will be very impressed to li listen to this answer. You asked me a question, which probably everybody can adopt in his business if there is a time for partnership. As a matter of fact, partnership has not to be remain, not to do throughout the life. It is, it is to be done till both the partners need it. And when both the partners think that it is the time that we must part from each other, they should do that. I would tell you how to dissolve partnership. I had not my own formula, which my partner also accepted. My partner had a technical knowledge. Therefore, we started a technical institute. We both used to work hard because that was the beginning of starting business. Every big businessman initially has to do a hard work. Therefore, we used to work hard. But when the partnership was to be dissolved, I remember we both sat together and thought what to do. Should we go to court or should we appoint an arbitrator for dissolution of partnership? But you know, we never like to spend money unnecessarily. That was unnecessary spending during that time when we dissolved. And therefore, I prepared one list of my all business, assets, everything. And after making that list, I kept it before him and I told him that out of this list, two lists were prepared, take the list which you want. He said, no, Mr. Zushi, I will prepare a list. I said, you prepare. He prepared two lists and he said, this house, this hotel, this, that. You select Mr. Roshi, and I selected. And now, 
I took it, and another partly, another thing he took. The total expenditure for dissolution of this partnership was three rupees, because for one cup of tea it was one and a half rupees, and therefore two teas means three rupees. So in three rupees the partnership was dissolved, and we are still good friends <laughs> after 20 years of dissolution of partnership, because we don't hate each other. He started. He started increasing his business. I started doing that in my business. He brought his uh, daughter's husband in the business. I brought my son in the business, and everything is going on well. By but I always say by grace of God. Because whatever good happens, happens because of the grace of God. That is to be said. But we have to work hard. <laughs> Super dissolution of partnership. So we go, could spend three rupees and got it dissolved. Fantastic! It is a wonderful formula. Do you all understand what it did? <laughs> Divided the entire business into two lists. One partner made the list, the two list, and the other partner was given the option to select the list. So there cannot be a bias and there cannot be a miscalculation. Right. I think this is your own made and formula. And we did not take third person's advice. That is also important. <laughs> Sir, you have been a very successful personality in public life as well as in business. As a succession plan, how did you, like uh, Mr. Unmesh Joshi, is himself a very, very uh, low-key person, uh, not uh, visible like how you are very visible. So, how did you groom him up to become a very successful businessman? I know him personally very well, I and he's a fantastic businessman. So, how did he, uh, how did he get coached up? Before 25 years, I brought him into business. He had nothing. Only one table. My expenditure was only one table, telephone, and everything. What is required in the office? So he he used to sit next to me and see what I am doing. Probably he must have been sent to the office by my wife. So <laughs> so he used to sit and watch. And in the evening, he used to tell my wife that father was really working. <laughs> But. That was the that was the beginning. After five years, I told him to become my partner, and I gave him twenty five percent partnership, and seventy five percent I have kept with me. You always remember that your share in a partnership must be bigger than your partner's share, <laughs> so that the partnership dissolves also smoothly. So he became my partner. Twenty-five percent partner second year, third year I increased it to fifty percent, and now I have transferred everybody to him. Every parting of business is transferred to my son. I don't do anything, and if somebody comes and says, "Give me your advertisement," I send him to my son, and my son never meets people. <laughs> That's a fantastic game no, plan. No, that man comes to me again. <laughs> then what do you do? That your son that does need not meet me. But then you are not a good businessman. One with all these difficulties meets him, become gets a money from him for advertisement. <laughs> Otherwise not. And meeting him is really difficult. You anybody 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 who want to meet me, it's two minutes job. Anybody who comes, I meet him. But my son. Never meets people, excepting is convinced that you are coming in his benefits, for his profits. Then he will immediately call you, give you a cup of tea, ask for anything you want to eat, provided you have gone to him for business, and from you he hopes that he will get money. Fantastic. <laughs> After all, he is my son. Don't forget it. <laughs> No, I did not get. It. Was this the motivation to your son? You coached him up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my son is architect, basically. He has done diploma and degree in architecture. Therefore, it was we were bound to come into construction line. But thereafter, I saw that he is earning in a business than what I used to earn. He is earning hundred times more than what I used to. Earn. Therefore, the question is addressed to me, but I will put it to him, 
as to what is his motivation because motivation is also a secrecy in business secret kim keeping secret things secret he is his motivation <laughs> he doesn't tell me also how does he do business but gives me whatever i want <laughs> on unreturnable basis <laughs> then i am very happy with my son so this is a fantastic no, yes yes and therefore i will remember try to get a son like my son and you will be happy <laughs> So the simple formula is: you made your son sit in your cabin for five long years, yes, yes. where he could observe you and learn people skills as well as uh, become sharp in today's uh, ways of work. Fantastic! I think that's a good succession plan that we should uh, follow with our our uh, family at home, uh, sir. I would now like to request uh, the August gathering to ask you some questions, which you can address to. Can we all begin now? The question session. But only change I have made. according to the rules here that you should ask me questions on industry business industry, uh, business on business but my permission is to ask me any question on any subject don't ask me a question whether your marriage was a love marriage or a proposed marriage don't ask me this but otherwise you can ask any question <laughs> yes deepak bhai yeah. in education it is very difficult to get very good uh, teachers so how did you uh, or how you are coping with uh, this difficulty no i had uh, prepared some questions your question was one of that that there is shortage of good people educated people and educated people with minimum salary is more difficult <laughs> and therefore for me it becomes always difficult to get good teachers it's not only your difficulty it is my difficulty also and uh, i would like to make a general statement on this it's not only in education but in every walk of life i have seen that people do not study any subject with full concentration and because they don't study with full concentration the generations which are coming up also are not highly qualified highly educated and if you ask me the percentage of nice people is very small i found a remedy on that but it is for rich people or really a strong medicine for becoming rich for instance if you want good people you can get good people also as i said that you can become rich provided you are good people how to get good people i will tell you a very easy thing to do some of you must be doing it find out a person with reti retiring from municipality who who was a deputy municipal commissioner or assessor and collector and bring him to your office so he is sitting arrangement air condition office nice table nice chairs and ask him what salary you want and you agree to whatever amount he says give him that salary then you go to fire brigade office in fire brigade office also people are retiring keep a list of retiring people from all government offices can you do this and if you do this you will always get the best people such experienced people if you don't get such people come to me i will provide you good people for any category thank you <laughs> yes sidhu good evening sir uh, sir i am at the start of my uh, career business career uh, i am also fascinated by politics because it is glamorous so <laughs> whenever i try to uh, take some step towards uh, politics uh, people say that you will not be able to manage uh, the business uh, you you cannot manage so how do you manage uh, both full time business and even uh, politics you see managing both the things are possible provided you remember always the sentence of my, my boss mr baga saab thakre which i said that you must have a strong desire to do it and Secondly, you must determine to do it. 
you will succeed uh, i would like to ask one question here which i discussed with you there is a very good concept which i implement seat 1a and seat 1b <laughs> it's a very interesting concept seat 1a and seat 1b are the first two seats in every aircraft joshi sir always takes seat 1a and he will always get a very very prominent person from the country in seat 1b and he learns through that journey and he understands which is the next better business to get in after talking to that seat 1b the seat 1b has benefited him so much from all the airlines that he has written a book and the name of the book is 1b, 1B. <laughs> Next question, please. Next question. Here, Vivek. Sir, Vivek Mandon, sir. Being in public life, I know it takes up a lot of time. So, it's uh, from morning 8 o'clock till 11, 30, 12, people want to meet you, see you with uh, letters. So, how did you manage the business? What were the parameters you watched? Exact planning. Always, last 45 years. In the morning between 9 to 11, I sit for the public. I meet anybody without appointment. If somebody asks appointment, I said, not during 9 to 11 in the morning, you can just try. Telephone any time, you will be given this time. Because you are coming without an appointment. And I must meet people. If I want to contest elections, I must be in touch with the people, which I do. And therefore, planning is necessary everywhere. So in my political life also, People will not say that Manor Joshi does not meet people. So it is never difficult for one who is doing good planning. Do good planning and you will succeed. India knows two people are always on time or rather before time. One is Amitabh Bachchan, next is Dr. Manor Joshi. <laughs> These two people, even Dr. Manor Joshi, even today, he was 20 minutes before time in the same traffic conditions. Of course, he must be getting some privileges on road, but still he reaches on time, before time. I have seen him always before time. And he gets very upset with people who come late. So I think his time management is wonderful. And that's most important aspect in any businessman's life. Rahul, you need to ask a Before question. Before that, I would like to ask you a, one question. What do you want? <laughs> because one who praises me must have always a desire in his heart. <laughs> he is so pra praising me so much so that I asked him a basic question. What do you want from me? Even you, do, you don't praise me, I'll give you. Sir, <laughs> sir, we are going back to the same room where we were sitting. Yeah. The list is too long, the world will come to know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yes, I Rahul. said you, I'll give you everything at your cost. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, what could be the best way to motivate your employees? I mean, uh, you just now said that the time comes where you have to split the partnership. We are on the verge where we want to make our employees as partners or try to find out the best way to incentivize or motivate them. Motivation is not difficult. The first thing what I want to do is to treat him as my relative. Those who work with me, if they have any difficulty, I like, I prefer to help them. And fortunately, if somebody is sick, and if some employee really wants some treatment from him, I give the treatment free of charge. I don't see even what is the expenditure, whether it is high or low. But you know, the person working with you must be treated as your nearest relative. And if you do that, no difficulty. Fantastic. Last question. Yes, yes. Okay, last two questions. I have a question. Uh, how do you solve your problems within the family? Because we are a dynastic kind of culture where we transfer the business from family to another generation. But you see a lot of conflicts from the new generation to the old generation. The transfer is not very easy. So what happens when there is a conflict there? What are your tips on this? In a, a business family? Yes, in a business disputes family. Disputes of between generations in the same family? Correct. Business family. If there are disputes between the young generation and the elder generation of a business family, how it needs to be solved? Fortunately, in my family, the culture is different. It must be in many families. Elders are to be respected. 
and if you are either then whether you are right or wrong one who is not either has to listen to him and the interest that is the head of the family must be impartial then the things are said right they are not difficult to resolve provided it is decided once for all as to who see who is the chief of the family and generally in every family i won't say about the community or religion the eldest person is so much respected that whatever he gives a decision is final in in cases where there is unnecessary democracy in the family then the things become difficult but otherwise in our families there is generally no difficulty and in spite of this if there is a dispute amongst the older and the younger generation then what should be the resolution how should we resolve it you see it's a question of understanding what is more important is to be done this particular philosophy is more important i will tell you because my, in the morning when i sit for the public grievances our number of people came to, number of people come to me with these difficulties they come to me listen to me because i am an outsider but amongst themselves they are not prepared to listen i ask them did your father not tell you to do this they will say yes then why did you not do it in the house only why did you bring this to your father to us they say they are all afraid of you and their i said why to why to be afraid of if this is in the interest of unity of the family you should listen to the this person and do it so you suggest a arbitrator to do the job of settlement of a disputing family yes i have i have settled such issues number of times so there is I an have, arbitrator which can help for every I, family disputes yeah, yeah. Wow. good understanding of both the sides resolves the problems fantastic problems are, well last question yeah. don't go to court i have been advising always because courts take a lot of times advocates become rich but you remain poor as you are and therefore don't go to them <laughs> sir uh, in your uh, journey of life from 25 50 to 75 years it is not the success all the time maybe there may be some setbacks also in your life political life as well as in your business life how you handle those situations you are absolutely right there were problems there were difficulties there were different sub opinions uh but you know in the entire family if one person is good that is also enough and uh, fortunately that was my role fortunately i say and therefore whenever i found that this issue may become big now you know we were four brothers and we in due to due course of time we got divided i i remember even today my mother a old lady she sat with all the things in the house that time we were poor because we were not in the business so we we are so she she called all the brothers and everything from the house was brought and asked tell me what do you want this is the thing and these are the things for preparing food this stove this what not what everything see there you take this you take this and she asked me yes what will you take i said don't give me anything she was surprised she thought something wrong must be with my physique and therefore i am saying i don't want it but my another brother my eldest brother who is now uh, uh, her his age is now 80 85 to tomorrow day after tomorrow he is entering 85 he also said i don't want anything so only two brothers remained so instead of giving to all four brothers so she gave it to two brothers and today if you look at the brothers who has earned money who had lost money you will find that we both brothers who did not take anything are richer in the family so it is not difficult always whenever there is a division in the family 
don't take anything outside there is got up money you can go and earn one uh, one very interesting point to note is he has got many successful businesses like this will also answer mr vincent mathai's question partially he has got many successful businesses but he also has failed in seven businesses so failure in business is not the end of everything he has failed in seven businesses and he has succeeded in seven businesses he also has a very famous statement which we quote many a times that to be successful in life for every entrepreneur to be successful in life a entrepreneur should have sugar on his tongue and ice on your head <laughs> if you have this you will be a very very successful businessman sugar on your tongue and ice on your head so always be sweet be positive and always be cool and calm don't get angry frustrated or get into an argument provided you are not a diabetic patient <laughs> then you you can put sugar free sugar sugar <laughs> sugar free you can take i have two simple questions for you one you said uh, you had a political guru now who was your business guru and you want honest or dishonest <laughs> i think in business you we talk honest huh? you you want only, honest answer sir honest answer <laughs> guru can be seen if you move in a society with open eyes You see, my brother in law had a hotting in Dadar. I used to go to him number of times, and I saw that every day in the evening he used to collect money and go. So that affected me. I said, "If he be in the hotting industry, money can be collected like this. Why not to do a hotting business?" And I came into hotting business. So he was your hotel business guru. Guru, guru, naturally, naturally, he never guru. Yeah, I just want to share something. You know, uh, I have the privilege to watch your life very closely, and uh, you know, uh, once uh, you became Lok Sabha speaker, there was all party uh, felicitation of him. And that time, Mr. Narendra Jadhav, who was the vice chancellor of Pune University and still a planning commission member, you know, sir is so acute about planning that uh, you know he said that uh, even sir has to yawn. He will yawn, you know, by planning. So. <laughs> today by this week uh, i can say on behalf of all these people that uh, we are going to become a very very good planner and you have also said once that you know at the age of 50 with all your experience you should take off so on behalf of our the entire group you know we uh, uh, i want to promise you that yes we are going to take off from here thank you sir uh, i used to do my first business handicraft diggers means chandan and hastidanta this was my first business i used to purchase in mumbai with my brother i used to go to nagpur and sell chandan and hastidanta for some time this gave me money but then after i got up traveling by train and that too by third class i can't imagine now <laughs> but, but this was done and i lost i lost in business and i closed it Then my second business was milk. I just I opened a shop at the hands of Mr. Baga Sab Thakre, a shop of milk, and this business I could not do. I had a loan of forty forty five thousand rupees. That time it was a big amount, so I closed the business. Second business. Third business was crackers. i used to stand outside the cracker shop and as soon as the customer refused to buy the buy the crackers in somebody's shop he turned and when he turned i went to him and i said i will give you at a cheaper rate <laughs> i am surprised how i could do it that is called But customer poaching sir uh, customer you must make your customer always happy so when i said customer but then what happened you know my crackers did not make noise <laughs> cheaper cheaper things this happens and i closed the business immediately <laughs> then we used to prepare pockets small money pockets purses and this was also done for some times my relative means you know him by name sudhir joshi this sudhir joshi was my partner in our first three business my brother was my partner in uh, uh, making pockets my partner was my so, uh, nephew sudhir so joshi my sister's son so he used to be with me 6 months 
we did this business and closed it down. This Kohinoor tin factory was started with Mr. Kokni, my basically my partner in business. So we used to purchase tin, prepare something out of that tin and sell it. At that time, it was difficult to get a license for tin. But we had licenses enough. And the profits we got were more by selling the tin instead of preparing articles from the tin. <laughs> so we did it. But then we thought that this is unethical and therefore we stopped it. Then there was, then my nephew said that let us do some other business model. Therefore we started Mansudha Corporation of India. Mansudha means Manohar and Sudhir. Manohar and Sudhir, you can understand Mansudha. So this Mansudha Corporation was started. Name should be always big name, like Kohinoor. People think that it must be big business of big people. <laughs>